Let's talk about GLP-1s and type 1 diabetes. I'm a diabetes doctor and I'm collaborating with You're Just My Type to answer your questions. So many of you asked about GLP-1s like Ozempic and Manjaro. So this is one of two videos I'm releasing at the same time about this topic. This video is about why me and many other endos are so excited about using GLP-1s in T1D. And check out my other video to learn about clinical trials that are enrolling right now around the world using GLP-1s in type 1 diabetes. So first off, using GLP-1s in type 1 diabetes is definitely off-label, which means that these medications are not yet FDA approved to manage type 1 diabetes. That being said, many people have found GLP-1s to be a game changer in how they manage type 1 diabetes. Now, here are three reasons how GLP-1s can help in type 1. First off, these meds are most well known for helping people lose weight, primarily by reducing appetite and helping people feel full faster. And as you probably know, if you live with type 1 diabetes, when you're generally eating cleaner and snacking less, blood sugars naturally tend to be easier to manage. Number two, for people who have excess weight, they can also develop insulin resistance, which means insulin doesn't work as efficiently as it should. And we know Ozempic and Manjaro are highly effective for treating insulin resistance. Now, the first two reasons were relatively self-explanatory, but I think you'll be surprised by the third. So in type 1 diabetes, one of the biggest challenges is that insulin just doesn't work fast enough. That's why we're always trying to come up with faster insulins, and that's why it's generally recommended to try to pre-bolus for meals when possible. But what if instead of trying to speed up your insulin, you could slow down the glucose spike, giving more time for the insulin to catch up? GLP-1s do just that by slowing down your digestion. All right, so what are the downsides for GLP-1s? Number one, as is too often the problem in healthcare, the biggest issue is often cost and insurance coverage. And so many people are trying to get on these meds that insurance companies are eager to find any reason they can to deny coverage. So I'd recommend finding a doctor who is familiar with using GLP-1s and type 1 diabetes as they might have more experience in trying to get your insurance to cover it. Alternatively, check out my next video to learn about clinical trials as a great way to actually get paid to try these medications for free. Another downside is that, of course, every medication has side effects. And while they are generally well tolerated, which is honestly why they're so popular, the most common side effects are GI related, such as nausea, diarrhea, or constipation. On that note, I find that people with type 1 diabetes are often very sensitive to these medications and only need to be on very low doses of them. So once again, it's important to work with a prescriber that is familiar with GLP-1s and type 1 diabetes. So feel free to ask any follow-up questions you might have or anything else about type 1 diabetes, and we'll try to answer it for the next Ask an Endo session.